about it, but do we believe it? We can sing the lyrics to a new song, but do we believe it? I don't know. Church, he rolled away that stone, and he rose from the grave. Jesus has come. He has come to redeem. He has come to take away the pain and the sorrow. Can you see him? Another one and another one and another one is on the way. Miracle upon miracle is happening. Can you see him? Can you see him? The things written in God's word, that was then, which shows it can happen again. It's not a one time off. We can look at God's word and go, you did this then, and I believe for it today. So what are you believing for today? What are you believing for today? Because church, we can get so caught up in everything around us. But we know the truth. done. Are we going to speak life into the sorrow? Are we going to speak hope into the hopelessness? Are we going to get caught up? Are we going to be hopeless? Church, we're telling our friends to wake up. Jesus says, wake up. Don't tell your friends to wake up. They don't know. And how will they know until you speak life? Oh, I wasn't going to say it, God. (laughs) Jesus did not promise a perfect life. And I believe sometimes we act like we should have a perfect life. to say that but the world is hurting what words are we going to use to bring hope we have our words and our friendships we have access to our families and our neighbors we are online with social media And I get it, church. What you face, I face. What the government does, we all feel it. But they are not our enemy. There is no more cursing our government. There is zero more. Instead, we pray for our government. We pray for those that do not know Christ. We lift up our nation to God because he is God of our nation he is the God of our world so who are we to say otherwise we're no one let's use our platforms wisely I wasn't going to say any of this we need to use our platforms wisely because the world is hurting and if they know that you have Jesus in their life they are looking to you for hope. And if there is no difference in us, why should they even care? Sorry. Jesus, we pray for our nation. We do 
do not fear. And I speak against fear in the name of Jesus. We do not fear because we have found hope. And for those who have not found hope, we will share hope. Jesus, we are followers of you. We have committed our lives to you. We want to keep our eyes focused on you. Show us where you are working. Open doors for us to have fresh conversations to those who are lost. Let us be able to show where you are the light of the world, where darkness cannot touch you. And Jesus, you live within us, and darkness cannot touch us. So Jesus, we pray for our nation. We pray for the ones who are, who are in government positions. Lord, today I ask that you come in such a mighty way and meet them where they're at. Let it be a Saul encounter on the road to Damascus. That's what I ask for the name of Jesus. God, that you make yourself known. And God, we believe that this will happen in your perfect timing. And God, out of this, we will be a nation that looks to you. We believe that for every province, that there will be a province after province, God, that it will be a ripple effect that will go across our nation where we will look to you, that there's going to be people, God, that you are calling right now, that you are striking into their hearts where they have a specific voice, God, not the ones that are not supposed to speak, but the ones that are supposed to be speaking. You will give such a fresh anointing to those people, whether that's here in New Brunswick or any other province of Canada. God, I pray right now that your spirit be drawing them, that you be touching their heart, that you will be giving them dreams when they wake up and go, what was that? God, I thank you that you are speaking and that you are not dormant, that you see all that is going on. This is not new to you. And here we are freaking out. Forgive us for removing our eyes off sight of you. Forgive us for looking at the waves and the storms when you're standing right in the water going, you have little faith, I'm right here. So today, Jesus, we stand ground with you. This is a moment where we stand ground with you, where we speak truth. And when we don't know what truth is, we look to your word and see what it says to this situation. And then we speak truth. We thank you, Jesus, that you are going to light the way. Our hope is found in you. Thank you, God, that you are a God of grace, God of power. Miracle upon miracle, another one's on the way. Can you see him? God, you get all the glory, all the honor, all the praise to your name. Church, we pray that in his name. Amen. Oh, can you guys just give him a clap or something? Our God is good. You can have a seat. That was... I believe God was, he, yeah, all week, church, God's been just speaking. And I know that he's been speaking to you. So I want to say, be encouraged. Be encouraged. Well, today's a bit of a different day. It's a special day because we have a special guest speaker all the way from the Philippines today. So we're going to welcome Gwen up here. And Gwen French has been a missionary in the Philippines. I overheard for 20 years, and she was originally sent from Family Worship Center. But I'm, gonna, I'm not going to talk too much about it because she's going to share all that. But we're just super excited that you're here with us this morning. And yeah, you can be up here. That's fine. And uh, we're just excited to hear what God's been doing in the Philippines. So here's Gwen. I'm home. I'm so excited to see a lot of your faces. I am so sorry for my voice. Am I clear? Yeah, I've had a bad cold, and this is the side effect from it. So I normally don't sound raspy, but I'm sorry. I have lemon water. 
I'm trying. Analyze. But God is good. Amen? Amen. You know, it's been 20 years, like he said, since we were sent from this church. 20 years. Because of that 20 years, there's so many salvations. I'm so thankful. You know? Um, and we said yes to God. You don't know what you're saying yes to. Just your will, your way. Huh? I mean, seriously, we had no idea. And Dale always said, you know, if I knew, I'd probably have said no. <laughs> but uh, the thing is, we still would have said yes, but I tell you, it would have been a harder yes. You know, because, but when we look at the faces and we look at the people and we see the changes in lives and the people that were souls that have turned to Paul's and, you know, it's amazing. I, it's hard for me to tell different stories without bringing names in or something and for the, uh, the audience and online to keep ourselves safe, some things are limited, okay? All right. So um, we'll go back to 20 years ago. Actually, I'll go back further than that. Uh, before Dale and I even got married, God had put us together. It's a good thing that we had already liked each other and we'd have been in trouble. <laughs> Really, I mean, you really do rely on God, you know. And then every time we would go somewhere, they'd say, you too, you're called to the, to the mission field, you know. And it would be again and again and again, even here, Lisa. I was sitting on that side of the church, and it was a nice service. It wasn't a service of, uh, the, you know, powerful moving of the Holy Spirit. It wasn't like that. At that time, it was just a praise and worship. And the Lord says, uh, I have a word for you, and it's from Lisa. And she's over on this side of the church. And we're going, okay. I said, this is different. Maybe my mind's going. And then the pastor gets up, and he said, you know, he stopped everything. He says, somebody has a word for somebody from the Lord. He said, let's just go around and shake hands with each other. And uh, when you get to that person... Release what God says. And so I already know, because God's already told me. So I thought, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. <laughs> I am sitting in my seat. I'm not even going to look at Lisa. If it's God, Lisa will come to me. Amen? So all the people, they're shaking hands, and I'm shaking hands with people, but I'm not moving from my seat. Lisa comes over and she's mingling. She comes over. She shakes my hand. She releases my hand. She grabs my hand and she starts prophesying. I know that we went to where we went because of God. Lisa, never lose that spirit that God has given you. You know, it's amazing what God is doing. He has blessed us through you guys giving right? So it's as many are called, but few are chosen in Matthew 22 verse uh, 14. You know, um, it's hard to give up your ambitious life. Can you imagine thinking about yourself and then God just says, okay, I want you to do this. And you're like, well, God, that's way out of my league right now. Right? Everyone, you understand? But when you say yes, he will equip your yes. He will take you from where you are and he'll put you to where you need to be. I'm not just speaking about me. I'm speaking to whatever God has in your life. All right? So when you say yes to God, it's no longer your way. Say, it's no longer my way. Exactly. It says, but it's his way. And you die to your future plans. Maybe it was the trip to Bahamas. I don't know. But what I'm saying is, when you say yes to God, if he wants that trip for you, you'll go. But if he doesn't want that trip for you and you said yes to him, you stay. Right? And you have to listen to the Holy Spirit every day, not once on Sunday. Right? So you need to abide by what he wants for your life. Um... He says, what does a missionary do? I heard one time someone says, oh, I want to be a missionary because we have, you'd have servants. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, I swallowed hard over that one. <laughs> yeah, what do we do? We preach. We preach the Christian faith. We baptize. We make disciples. That's what we do. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. You excited about salvation? Yeah. I was excited to see your baptisms. I'm in the Philippines going, yes, I love it. You know, so I mean, if it's affecting me and I'm in the mission field, how many more people is it affecting? When I see the changed lives, when I see people coming back to Christ that had, that had a strayed, right? I am so excited. So um, Matthew 28 and 19 says, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We get excited. Do you know, because we said yes to God, there is hundreds, hundreds of people that are now saved. I don't even know the number, but I can guarantee you there's hundreds upon hundreds. You know? So many times I stop and think, what if we said no? What have we said no? What have we lost out on? How many people wouldn't have made it? You know, I had a vision of there was a big hole and people were falling into it and it was hell. And I'm on the back line going, no, 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 don't go that way. Follow me, follow me. When you say yes to God, you're on that line and you're telling people, don't go that way. I've been on that line, right? And you're hauling them back. Don't lose it. You need to evangelize. You need to go in the highways and byways and compel the people. They're not going to come through the door by themselves, most generally. Right? So you need to do that. Like, you go into the grocery store. You meet somebody. You know that they're not living for God. Or maybe they're, they're uh, uh, in need of a friend. Invite them to your house. What's it going to cost you? A coffee and a donut? But don't gossip. When you go to the house, speak the word of God. You know the change in me? Do you know why I'm happy? You know why? You see what I've gone through? But look what God is doing in my life, and he can do the same for you. Amen? Amen? So reach out. Reach out to the lost. Anyways, and don't say, oh, why don't you come by and visit? Like as if they're going to do that. But not. You're going to say, oh, I am so happy to see you. Why don't you come to my house and have coffee? Are you available this afternoon? Maybe they can't go this afternoon. Well, what day are you available? I really, really want to meet up with you. Right? Make that time. Make that, that extra effort. You know, when I was home last time, I was only home a short time, only five weeks. Within five weeks... I led three people to the Lord, baptized one. The other one got baptized on her own. I was excited. And, you know, it wasn't because I met them in the church, because I didn't. Some I showed up at their house. You got it? Yeah. Anyways, I'm not mentioning names, but I was excited. Anyways, be obedient to that still, small voice. When God tells you to do something, he tells you not to do something. Be still. You know, and even your surroundings. I remember when I lived here, uh, I was driving down the road and there was a car in front of me was driving me nuts. I wanted to get home. They wanted to go slow. And every time I could pass, another car would come. So I'm, I'm going, okay, okay. I'll, uh, uh, there's finally a passing lane. And I hauled out behind that car, stepped on it. And then I slammed on my brakes. <laughs> And the car behind me was a friend that was a coworker, and she called me later. She said, I have to ask you, how did you know to stop? You should be in the ditch because when I slammed on my brakes, the car went right out in front of me into a house. I said, well, you know why? Because the Lord showed me the picture of that house and that car sitting in the yard. Nothing was said. Just that I had a flash picture of that car in that yard, and I slammed on my brakes. They didn't put a signal light on. They put nothing on. It went right out in front of me. That's how quick. When we're in the Philippines, I mean, we've had so many things. We've had, uh, like one time we were doing, you remember here we did uh, Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flames. 
We did our own version in the Philippines. Erica and I were super busy making costumes, devil costumes, you name it, angels and everything. And we did this whole thing. And it was right in the middle of the community. So it was a soul winning thing. So you know what happened? We get attacked. I mean, majorly attacked, not by people, demonic attacks. Here we were, we couldn't breathe. Craziness. I would lay down in bed and all of a sudden it was like, I can't breathe. I sat up, I said, this is not, Erica was the same way. I went to uh, the hospital in emergency. When I went into the emergency, they said, they checked me, they said, all of your vitals are out of whack. You need to get in the hospital. I said, what's wrong with me? They said, we don't know. I said, okay, see ya. They said, how can you go home? I said, I know what's wrong, don't worry. So I went home, what I have to pray? They didn't understand what was wrong with me. And one of our board meters, board members at the time uh, here in Canada called my phone in the Philippines and said, uh, okay, God told me to call you. And at this time, I've already been three days sitting on a chair with my head against the wall because I can't lay down or I'm going to not breathe. Erica was sitting in the corner with her head against the other wall. And as soon as he prayed, boom, we're healed. We're healed. So when you're on the front line, you can be attacked. <coughs> I am so sorry for my voice. Okay. So lots of things have happened over the years. I mean, one time I went 80% blind. Never knew what happened. Went to the specialist. And he said, I said, I usually have 20-20. He said, sit in the chair, let me check your eyes. Check my eyes, 80% blind. I said, don't worry. God didn't send a blind missionary, he'll heal me. <laughs> you know, a week later I'm back and he said, I said, I just wanted to say that, you know, God restored my eyes. He said, sit in the chair. He said, okay, what is this? Uh, can you see this here? I said, do you want me to tell you what that little print is down in the right-hand corner? <laughs> He said, can you see that? I said, yeah. I said, my God heals. I just want to let you know. Amen. Amen. So anyways, so um, Dale had passed away last, last year. And right, after, right uh, at that time, just before he did, uh, Michael was there, our son visiting. And he, uh, he did a one-night crusade. I'll tell you, it's harvest time. It's harvest time there. Yeah. It is harvest time, there and here, because I proved it last time I was home. So here's Michael, and what they do is they go into an area, and uh, they have these uh, basketball courts. The Filipinos love basketball. It's their number one thing, right? So they have this basketball court, and they have them in the middle of, of shacks and everything else. So we set up the drums and the music and everything, and we give out little flyers saying that we're there and that they can get something. So people will come because they, they're curious. So they start playing, and more and more people show up and stuff. And uh, what we were giving was rice, of course, you know, uh, some kilos of rice, and uh, we buy them by the sacks and then uh, separate them for the families. And we gave Bibles. Do you know what they came for? The Bibles. The Bibles. They said, we, we love the rice, but we really need a Bible. Yeah. Last year, Erica and Joel, the last year and a half, Erica and Joel had bought 12,000 Bibles. Do you know how many households? Do you know how powerful that is? 12,000 Bibles. We've only got a few hundred left. If anybody wants to support Bibles, should more love for more support to come in that way. And because of buying from the same place, and if we give them um, teach uh, like a salvation message from it showing what we're doing, then we can get a discount, which has also been really good. So here's Michael. Michael, uh, he preaches, and then he does an altar call. He says, Mom, I've never seen anything like it. They all came forward. <laughs> it was in a different area, and they all came forward. This is uh, an area which um, you take a boat to get there. Most of the houses are over top of, uh, over like sticks, if you want to say that. 
And um, uh, so they flatter area, they build like the basketball court. And then that's where we had the thing. But out of that, we have a house church now. And I just read uh, something that Joel wrote. And he said, um, there was a reason something went on and some didn't show up at it because he's been going from church to church. And uh, he said there was 63, I think 63 people and 20 of them wasn't there. He's like, it was so hot. It was standing room only. How did 20 more fit in? You know what I mean? It's because they're hungry, he said. But anyways, so... Uh, yeah, because I have right here 60 kids plus 20 adults crammed in a small house. So what we did is we do already have the money to buy, it's almost like a beach, but we have to still put it on top of the sticks. So um, anybody want to give? Hey, I need $5,000 to build me a church. <laughs> 5000 I already purchased the property. We only need 5000 for a simple above the, if the water comes in, we're above it. So anyways, we actually have two lots like that that are, um, we've already got the property, but we need 5,000 to build another one in another area. We have three boats on the water doing ministry, going from little island to little island areas. So it's amazing what God is doing. Um, anyways, um, in Isaiah 54, verse 17, it says, no weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord and the righteous uh, is to me, says the Lord. And you know, God has protected us many, 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 many times. Probably more times than what we ever know of. We, yes, we've had kidnapping attempts. I mean, out of 14, the, the police caught six and the other eight escaped one time. Um, other times Dale was here and there's an informant saying that there's kidnappers after me. Well, Dale was here. He didn't like that. But um, uh, we had the property. They said, don't go to the property alone. They know where you're at. They said, stop at a police station and pick up one of the police to go with you to protect you. Oh, my. That happened one time. I stopped and got a police. And I said, I can't handle this. Next time I just stopped and got my friend Joe in. So us two white women went up in the mountain and did what we need to do and we didn't bother with the police. <laughs> but anyways, and then I hired some people to, to fence in the property. And then later the police said, did you hire this certain guy by name? And I said, yeah. They said, he's one of the kidnappers. <laughs> Oh, my land. <laughs> anyway, so, because they had caught some, had killed some, some escaped. That was one of the ones that had escaped. But anyways, you know how God could change the heart of man, right? So when Dale needed blood, he was one of the donators. Yeah, yeah. God made him into a pussycat. Yeah, it was good. It was good. But that's just it. Like, we, it's amazing what... What happens is amazing what God does, but do we live in fear? No, but we do live responsibly. We do live responsibly. And um, yeah, I think of all kinds of stuff flashing before my mind, but anyways. But uh, there's one time I was driving down the road, had Joanne with me again, and this guy ran across the road and stopped. And I thought, I'm not stopping. This is a remote area. And then there's another guy on the other side of the road. Then the guy that ran across the road lay down right on the road. So you know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run him over, right? So I thought, this isn't good. I slammed on my brakes, cut the wheel, went around him and kept going. Meanwhile, Joanne went flying to the floor area and, and uh, uh, she said, you almost run him over. I said, that'd have been his fault, but you can't. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't my fault. Yeah. I had a lot of pity, but what can you do? There was one bus. There was people that laid down in front of the bus, and the bus ran them all over. And there's the reason why is because it would be, you know, hijacking the bus or something like that. But, yeah, I didn't stop. And when the police knew the car I had at the time had a bowl bumper on the front of the car, they said, look, if anyone tries to stop you, just bump them. Not always run them over, but go to a police station afterwards. 
I don't have that car anymore. I don't want to damage my other one. But anyways, but God is good. I'm just showing how he protects us, eh? So it says, hundreds of people have turned to Jesus. Do you know that my 12 churches are all family worship center? You have a lot of sister churches, okay? So when you look around, remember, there's hundreds sitting with you. Amen? You have supported us from the beginning. There's more people here. And those people pray for you guys. So when I see new faces, I'm excited. I'm excited about what God is doing. It's through your giving. It's through your caring. It's through your helping, right? And meeting the needs. Um, through your prayers. Because of your prayers, we are safe, right? It's uh, giving the time and effort. You know, it hasn't been easy in the ministry. Not one bit. <laughs> you know, we've had some amazing times. We've had some not so amazing times. But um, we never know, like, month by month what we actually get. You know, you get a paycheck. You know exactly what you're going to get. You're going to get your paycheck. Although the government does take a punch out, right? But with us, the Canadian government doesn't even allow us to know what is being sent to us. Like, who, who gives? We can know what's going to send once they send. But who's the givers? So if you give to us... And I don't say thank you. I am so sorry. It's because I didn't know. Okay? But I thank each and every one that does give and the church, okay, as a whole. Um, so we never know. So how did you budget what you don't know? Huh? Try to figure that one out. It's really, um, it's really fun, let me tell you. So we have some projects on the go. One of our projects is we're building a church. It's a more expensive church. It's 35000 I know that's not a lot for here, but uh, it is a huge amount for us. So we said, well, we'll do it like we do everything else. We'll take a step of faith. So when you see the video, you'll see some posts in the ground. That was our step of faith. <laughs> yeah, we start, and we've done everything that way. When we built our house, we built it out of adobe brick. Adobe brick? Yeah. In other words, we took the soil. Filipinos never heard tell of that. We used the soil and cement and sand, whatever, mixed it together, put it in a press, and called it our house. Okay? So, yeah, so it's a, it's a good-sized house, but we actually did build it out of our ground. Anyways, um, so with our pay... Um, we never know. Like, if you guys have a family and you have a family of, you know, three or four kids, you've got to feed. But if we don't get the money and we don't know that someone forgot to give or didn't give or a lot of our supporters have actually died off. So that's kind of hard also, right? So when we do that and you've got hundreds of people that rely on you. You know, every Friday we have workers um, that come for their pay. And we have 10 or 12 pastors that come. And the pastors pick up money for feeding programs. They pick it up for some receive allowances if they need it uh, for their travel, for extra expenses. And workers, you probably say, wow, you have workers? Remember I told you that the first people wanted to be a missionary because they have workers or servants? Okay. Anyways, I don't think you'd want to work for us because their pay is 200 pesos to 450 pesos for one day's work. That's only $5 a day. Would you work for $5 a day? The most they would be is $11.25 a day. And they usually work for, uh, some of them is a day or two, and some might be uh, five days, okay? So, but they still need to be paid. So, yeah, we do have that. So it can be a stress if we want it to be a stress, but we try not to stress about it and just pray about everything. You know, but what do the workers do? They do yard work, building projects, planting uh, and, and attending the gardens, working in the greenhouse, feeding and attending livestock. We have chickens, we have turkeys, we have quail, uh, cows, uh, fish in the fish tanks that are in the greenhouse. So they take care of the, all those things. Do you know if we had to do that, we wouldn't have no time for ministry? Really? So, but it helps them because it gives them food on their table. Right? So we're not a waster of money. If they have no work, they have no food. Right? Anyways, so 
Being a missionary, you can be stressed, and we try not to. We try to give it all to God. And I tell you, I say you give it all to God, but in the backside of your head somewhere as you're saying, but, 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 no, 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 but, but's today. Gotta just give it all to God, you know? But you know, two times I've gone to the hospital and did ECG. I thought my heart was gonna pump out of my chest. What's wrong with me? But you don't realize you carry stress. And one time, I didn't realize how bad it was until, uh, oh, by the way, ECG's clear. There's nothing wrong with me. <laughs> You know, so, uh, and then the other day it was, it was in St. John and you know how you put your arm in, do your blood pressure, 119 over 78, I think it was. So I'm fine. I'm fine. But, um, what was I at? Anyways. So anyways, being on the mission field, uh, and having things like that, ECG. So one time I was, I fell asleep in the chair and, um, Dale was sleeping Sean was sleeping. I could hear the snores in the house, you know? And then I just drifted off in the chair, and I heard what I thought was the trumpet, the Lord's trumpet, and I went, yes! <laughs> and then I went, I'm still here. <laughs> and I, but my spirit just went, yes. And when that happened, I felt like a ton of bricks fell off me. I had no more cares. And I'm going, yes, Lord. Yes, I still hear them snoring. I'm not left behind. <laughs> but it was just this amazing thing. I think God just allowed it just so that I knew what I was carrying. And then all of my um, heart, I'd say, issues went back to normal. But we just don't realize the stress in which you carry. Your pastor and his wife, you carry stress. You do. Even if you don't think you carry that much, you really do because they care and they love you. They want to see the church full. They want to see the expansions. They want to see all the young people. And they're doing a great job. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You make sure that you keep them in prayer every day and us too, right? Yeah. Okay, so anyways, so our day-to-day -day life, we'll get to that as a missionary. We organize the workers. We budget all finances, whatever is there. If there's not enough money to do something, then we find something that takes less money to do. So we're trying to always keep them, always keep them working. So your church group, like the pastor would have here, you have your Sunday meeting services, you have your Bible studies, your youth groups, your visitation in hospitals, you have, you have and homes, and seniors' homes, right? You have all those things. And then in the mission field, we have 12 churches. Three of them are house churches. And they all have Sunday services, Bible studies, youth groups, visitations, hospitals, homes, but not senior homes because that doesn't exist there. The seniors are still working. They're still doing whatever they can do to exist. It says uh, they also do, this is the extra things that we have, is street ministry. They, some of them have microphones. We bought things for them. We do need more of those machines, I don't know how much it would cost, a couple hundred dollars, I suppose, to be maybe $400 or something that they use to go from place to place. We do still need some of those. But anyways, but uh, they use those. They give out tracks. Joel and Erica supplies tracks, and uh, they give them out. Uh, lots of people, these poor people on the side of the road, whatever, are giving their lives to Christ. Like, it doesn't matter where we go. It's just expanding, expanding. It says um, they go house to house, spreading the good news, even casting out demons. How do you like that? You got that on your to-do list this week? Huh? Anyways, there was, uh, they will run to the church when they have problems. They'll run to our pastors. And one just happened not too, too long ago. Uh, a woman was really, really possessed. And the uh, community and family, whatever, come to the pastor and says, you need help. The pastor says, I'm getting back up. So they got a couple other of our guys, and they went there. It took them two hours to get this captive free. Two hours of nothing but prayer and prayer and, and everything. Anyways, finally, she's set free. Because of that, we, don't, we have another, uh, I didn't say anything about, we have three house churches, but this is just outreach areas. I can't count outreach areas, but this is now an outreach area that's full of people. 
because they seen the demonic set free. Amen? Anyways, so um, our ministry is very busy. When I'm posting online, I don't put half of what's on there. Sometimes I have to do it in the middle of the night because I'm tired and I don't have that much time, but uh, I try to. So if you see, I'll put a lot on, then nothing for a while, then a lot on again. I'm just trying to catch up. Anyways, um, so because we can be preaching, we can be teaching, driving. I do a lot of driving, like hospital driving as well. People in the hospital, out of the hospital, uh, taking women to clinics. Uh, one woman, she was, had to be taken to the hospital. I got her there 10 minutes before she gave birth. Only 10 minutes. I'm in the car driving saying, just breathe, just breathe. Don't push, don't push. <laughs> but anyways, got her there in time. I thought I was going to have to stop and deliver that one. Anyways, so uh, we were schooling kids. I had a graduation last October. So my seven students graduated, praise God. I was tired of high school. Now I'm back into kindergarten, elementaries and stuff. So yeah, anyways, um, we could be um, traveling from church to church. That's what Joel's doing now. He's going from one church to the other church to the other church, trying to get them all in, checking on them, make sure everything is, doing, is fine. Sometimes we're traveling by car, sometimes we're traveling by boat. So when you put the video on, you'll see what I'm talking about. It says, um, we ha also have to deal with, if there's disputes, family issues, counseling couples, it's very busy life, it's never boring, you know? So we also have orphans. We have two free preschools. Uh, we also do free weddings. So, because um, some people, they get saved and then they've already been living together, they've already had children, whatever, but they can't afford to get married. So we'll do all their paperwork for them to get them out of bondage. We build homes for the poor, the needy. Uh, Biosand filters are filters that Erica and Joel are just starting up now. We've dealt with it before, but they're gonna put it under their ministry to put biosand filters in areas where they don't have clean drinking water included on the islands. It's much needed. So I think they're probably, uh, would look at about maybe $125 per unit, but you'll be giving families clean water without them having to buy it or carrying it somewhere, right? So anyways, um, distribute medical equipment. We get containers from Ontario. We get medical equipment. You'll see some in the video, the giving out wheelchairs and walkers and crutches and all that stuff. But we get to pray for the people. We use it as evangelizing as well. So it's amazing. Um, then uh, distributing supplies from the shipping containers because there's other stuff that comes as well. But all of those are love gifts. They're loving on the people that can't afford anything, right? So it's amazing what God is doing. And then the boxes, you guys have given stuff from the boxes here. Um, school stuff that's come from the school that you had and different things. So anyway, so when parents are doing boxes, and I think right now they need like $1,000 to to cover what is already been boxed that needs to be sent in May. So anyways, each box is $185. Anyway, so um, I'm just fast forwarding through all this stuff here because I know our time is short. But uh, um, anyways, but our responsibility is great and we appreciate all and each thing that you guys have done, okay? So one last thing, when you pray, you, Pray for our monthly supporters, but also pray for visitors. We want you there. We want you there. I told your pastor last time I was here, I want him and he didn't show up. Huh? What's with that? He must have lots of money. Huh? Seriously. People don't know the ministry unless they visit the ministry. I could talk here all day and you won't understand it. Really, you need to see it. So you get with your pastor and we'll be waiting on the other side. We have, we have a shipping container there that can hold a few. Uh, it's true, it's true. Actually, there's like two hotel-like rooms, has little washrooms off them. One is two twin beds, one's a queen bed. Out in the front room, we have two twin beds. If you wanna be Philippine style, hey, 
we're ready for you, you know? And if you don't like that, there is a hotel that's a government hotel, beautiful swimming pool, not too far away. I think there's, I think it's on the video, and it's about $75 Canadian a night. But it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Anyways, and it's free breakfast. So <laughs> that matters, you know, and it's only 15 minutes from where we are, which is amazing to have a nice hotel in the outskirts. <laughs> Anyways, <coughs> so all those that can partner with us, we appreciate it and we need it and together we'll make a huge difference we're already impacting but now we have uh, growing pains we're growing growing but so does our financial need all right so I hope you understand that uh, nothing is too small it all adds up to a bigger amount right so God bless you all I love you I'm thankful that I'm home for a short time and we'll put this 12 minute video on I don't think it'll be boring for you and uh, love you all. God bless. Woo!